This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Flagstaff High Wall tent trailer, model HW27KS. Okay, so this is kind of a supplemental video to the manufacturer's video. When it comes to setting it up and bringing it down, and the general features, the manufacturer supplies an excellent video for that. This is just going to go into more detail um, about the different appliances and the different uh, uh, features of the trailer. Okay. So I'm starting right here on the off door, or excuse me, the door side rear. As you can see, the uh, kitchen's pulled out. So you have to plug the, the cooktop in. You also have to plug your, your grill in to the LP system. So that's done here for the cooktop. You can see it's a, just a quick connect female fitting with a valve on it. And that will connect right on there for your, uh, um, for your cooktop. Now for the griddle, you have uh, the same thing, it hooks up right here, there's the male, and then you have the female right here, uh, quick connect, like that, and then once you get it connected, you move it to that position to turn it on, okay? So, you also have running water here, we're still in the process of cleaning your trailer, so it's going to be a little, some antifreeze in there, but we're still working on it, so you do have water also out here, which is a good thing. Um, power. This, just so you know, is a sink vent. Uh, now, this is the this is used to fill your fresh water tank. So, obviously, the most common way to get water to this trailer is city water. You just hook it up, turn it on, and you're all set. If you happen to be camping somewhere where they don't have plumbing, there's no city water. You can pre-fill your fresh water tank here, and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So keep that in mind. Um, outside speaker, you know, all the usual stuff. There's some storage here. Okay. Move down a little farther here. Okay, so it has a power tongue jack. We've got an ex executioner's hood on it right now that comes with it. Uh, keep in mind that if, you, if this ever fails, this power tongue jack ever fails, you can pull this this um, plug right here and you can crank it manually if you have to. Let me get this back on here for you. Now you have a power wench. Or is it winch? <laughs> Either way. You got this thing powered to go up and down, right? Well, be careful if you got little kids around and they see you doing that. Sometimes they'll want to show their friends or something when it's in the down position and latched. And you can do tremendous damage to it if they if it's trying to if they try to torque it up when it's lat. So keep that in mind, kids being kids. And you want it to you bring it up so this wire here is taut. This the, what this actually does. People have all kinds of ideas. Well, it's going to keep the campus from from ripping and that sort of thing. But all what it really does is shows you how high to put the roof so your door your screen door fits in there correctly. Okay. If you need to ever needs to be readjusted, if it's not going to the right position, it can be, uh, there are ways to set the stops underneath this cover here, and you can do it, or you can bring it in and we can do it, whatever. It's just, it should be set for, for good, but sometimes, you know, you have to re, uh, reset the stops, so keep that in mind, it is something that can be adjusted. Two deep cycle marine batteries wired together as 12 volts, so you just, it, it's the trailer considers this one battery um, the way it's wired together it just doubles the storage capacity okay and of course these are your LP tanks here they just have that up for whatever reason right now we're still working on it okay now um, for the air conditioner you want to plug it in you have to have that plugged in in order to use it so you want to do that before you put the roof up of course if you're going to be using the AC you got your power cord it's a 30 amp and 30 foot cord um, outside shower, this is the city water hookup, the most common way to get water to the trailer. Remember I showed you on the other side there was a, uh, a way to fill the tank, well um, usually you're just going to use the city water, okay? And then this is this coax through to the other inside of the trailer. If you wanted to use it for campground cable into the trailer or an exterior antenna or anything you want to use it for, you can use it for. And these are covers for your refrigerator, they're just inspection covers. Okay. Here we have the, the water heater, it runs on gas, 
okay? Um, I just want to show you, let me set this aside where I won't get damaged here. Let me put it right there. So I want to, right now it's drained, of course, because it's, it's winterized. So it's drained and also the water heater is bypassed. The valves are bypassed in the back of the water heater. Um, so keep in mind, this is where you drain it. And this is the drain plug slash anode rod. This is um, an inch and a sixteenth six point socket to, to, uh, to screw this in and out. So keep that in mind, you need that in a, in a probably a six inch extension and then a, a ratchet or a breaker or whatever. So you should have that with you. Uh, the switch to operate, this is inside. Never run it without water in the tank. Always remember you have to have the water in the tank. Okay. Over here, this is another drain. And there's also a toilet drain up at the top. This would be the shower drain right here. Now, <clears throat> okay, let's get this correctly. So when it comes to your black tank, um, which is toilet water and waste, this is where you dump it. You get a hose with it so you can hook it up and put it in dump station. Now the gray water, which is sink and shower water, uh, hooks up right here. Um, you get an adapter so you can um, hook up a, like a garden hose or a push, a push on a hose, uh, whichever you uh, choose to do, and you can, you can direct the water wherever you want. But that's not toilet water and waste, so it's not as critical as, the, as getting the, the black tank water and waste into, the, into a dump station, okay? And then this, this device here is where your, your dump hose is stored when you're not using it. It keeps it out of the trailer and out of your tow vehicle and that sort of thing. All right, so another thing, one last thing back here. Uh, your door, your travel door hangs right here when you're not using it. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to inspecting the seals on this trailer, you always, you want to inspect the four corners. You see these, that plastic corner up there? You'll expect to inspect all four of those, make sure there's no crack in your separation. Any uh, attachment on the roof, like the vent, that sort of thing, a, a stack, whatever you have up there, you're going to look at that make sure there's no crack in the separation. And any place you see caulk from the factory, you're going to do the same thing. You do not use uh, hardware store caulk on this. You have to use uh, appropriate caulk from an RV place. The most common one is called, for this trailer, would be Clear Proflex. Okay, so make sure you get the right stuff. But inspect it regularly. That's important. Also, another thing to keep in mind, you never put this away wet. And if you have to, because sometimes, you know, there's morning dew on it or it's raining, as soon as you get back, you open it up and let it thoroughly dry out. Also, if you're not going to be using it for a season, you know, a couple times during the summer, you want to open it up and just let the wind whistle through it and uh, that sort of thing. So you, you, you always want to keep it dry. This thing, they're very high quality canvases. It, and it will, it will last forever, so uh, as long as you keep it dry. Otherwise, you get mold or mildew on it, just like you would with, with a regular tent, okay? So keep that in mind also. Okay, so here we go inside. Now, this is telling it's wired for solar, pre-wired. This is your, your sound, obviously, here. It, you can stream off of uh, a USB. You've got HDMI in. You've got Bluetooth, so you can hook up wirelessly with your phone or tablet, AM, FM radio, all that sort of thing, inside and outside speakers. Okay, and there's your remote for it, of course. Now, you have your lights here, of course, and some charge ports here. This is for the Wi-Fi Ranger. The Wi-Fi Ranger you'll see on the roof at, at the front of the trailer. Basically, its main function is it's a public Wi-Fi signal booster, so you get better Wi-Fi at your campground, for example. We'll, we'll talk about campground Wi-Fi. So, um, it goes like this. So you pull into your campground, obviously they're gonna give you a, a passcode or something to, your, to the Wi-Fi. So what you do, first of all, when you set up the Wi-Fi Ranger, there's three lines here with information on it. I'll just, it's hard to see, I'll just explain it to you and you can, you can look at it at your leisure. But the top one, it says Ranger Sky 4, I'll have to look closer here, 4787. So with all on all your devices, your phone and family's phone and tablets, you'll you go to the Wi-Fi section and you'll find that. That is your Wi-Fi Ranger, and you'll put in a password 
so it lo it'll log on automatically. Okay. Then, with a browser, uh, in anybody's device who's ever doing it, you go with a you put this address in a browser, and it'll take you to the page for this Wi-Fi Ranger. The temporary password is is change me now, forty seven eighty seven. So you make up your own password, but that's how you log on to the to the page for the Wi-Fi Ranger. You, you get on there and you'll see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, all the zillions of different kinds of Wi-Fi. You find the campground Wi-Fi, and then you'll just log on to it. So instead of, instead of losing, you know, instead of taking all your devices and have to uh, log them on to each place you stop, you, you'll just have to log on your Wi-Fi Ranger. Now it's a really good signal booster. So it'll it'll really make a difference in the quality of, of your of your of your Wi-Fi, and uh, you, you, I'm sure you probably know that when you get to these public Wi-Fi places, sometimes it's not so great. Uh, but with this, it improves it dramatically. Okay. Also, there's a second function that you'd have to talk to your you'd have to talk to Wi-Fi Ranger, and you also have to talk uh, to you, whoever you get your cellular service from, and you could pay uh, a monthly fee and have cellular service through this too. Most people don't do, do that. They uh, just use the public Wi-Fi. If you do, I mean, let's put it this way. People who, people who work from their trailer, like salesmen or traveling nurses, that sort of thing, they'll, a lot of times will have the cellular service, but most people don't really need it. Okay? Because considering you're camping, there's a lot of stuff to do. Okay. But kids can't be without their Wi-Fi for too long, or they start to, uh, they start to come apart at the seams. They actually start to disappear. So... Um, so here with the range, this is the sparker, you turn it clockwise, three burners, three knobs, and then the oven. So I think we've got, we probably have it turned on here. We've changed over the tank, so give me a, I'm not sure if, the, if it's on right now or not, so I'm going to just spark it to get the air out of it. Replace the air in the lines with um, gas, because there's nothing in there right now, because we've just we've been working on it. And if that doesn't work, I can always go out there and check it to see if they've got it turned off, which is probably the case, actually. I've tried that quite a bit, yeah. All right, so much for that theory. Let me go out to the tanks. So the thing is, when, you, when you've been using this on a regular basis, the, uh, the uh, range, it will, uh, yeah, see, they're shut off. So if, if you use it on a regular basis, you'll just spark it once in the light. Anytime you take off the tanks, disconnect it from the system, it's going to take... A little bit of sparking to get the gas through the, throughout the hose and or the line and push the air out. So, but right now I just turned it on, which is a much better way to do it because <laughs> I could have been sparking forever. All right, so let's start it again. There we go. Okay, that simple. Now the oven is a little bit different. This is the oven knob here. Um, oh, let me shut. I guess let me shut the light off. All the way at the back. On the bottom is a pilot light. You can see me sparking it back there, okay? So what you do is you you go to the picture of the pilot light right there, and you depress it and hold it during the entire lighting procedure. Then you're going to spark it with your other hand until the pilot light down there lights. Once it lights, you still keep you're still holding this in. You hold it in for another 10 seconds to heat it up. Then you go to operating temperature. It cycles as an oven does. But when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Took a while for us to get there, but we got it. Okay. Um, let's look right here now. So, this is obviously a, a GFCI right here. Okay. Um, all the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside, are wired through a GFCI. This GFCI. This is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. Uh, it should always be green like it is. If it goes off, obviously you take everybody outside, turn off the gas in the front, leave the door open, figure out what's going on. Um, it also, it, like I said, it de detects carbon monoxide and LP gas. It's also a low battery alarm. So here, let me put it through the paces so you can hear it. If it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your, same, same pitch as the other beep, but it's just very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. LP is good, carbon dioxide coming up. Okay, and then low battery alarm. And then back to green. It should always be green if it's not getting serviced. This is the, the other end of that coax that I showed you on the outside. 
This is where you light your water heater, right here. Okay. Um, this is your power converter. So what this does is converts AC to DC power. So you start off with 110 AC, and these are regular circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're all labeled. Okay. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. Those are 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. Okay. Now if uh, any of these blow, you'll actually see them glowing through this perforated plastic here. But um, the other thing to keep in mind, it's a battery tender. So as long as you're plugged into shore power, it will sense how much energy your batteries up front need and always keep them charged. So it's actually a battery charger slash tender, okay? Um, the, your refrigerator is a three-way refrigerator. Let me see if I can do this with in this position here. Hold on, I'll have to start up the camera work there. So right now you've got it in the most we've got it in the most common position, auto AC. Auto me AC means if the reason they call it auto, if you if you're running, you, let's say you're at the campground and you leave early in the morning, and it's a hot day, and an hour after you leave, the power goes out at the campground. Well, it'll automatically sense that and switch to gas and light on gas for you, right? So that's the best way to do it. That way you won't spoil the food. You can dedicate it. You know, you can go to DC power, which is 12 volts. So if you're pulling it down the road, for example, uh, it, the batteries will run this and then your batteries will be being charged by the alternator in your tow vehicle, for example. Um, and then you can switch over to gas, let's see, like that, dedicated to gas. But if you leave it on auto AC, it'll automatically switch over to gas if you lose power. Okay, that's just the temperature. But generally, you're gonna have it up all the way and on and off, okay? Three-way refrigerator, runs on AC power, DC power, and LP gas. All right, these are your keys here. You, most people take the spout off when they're closing up the trailer. Um, so you can do that, just unscrew it right there and lay it in the sink. Uh, this is your thermostat for your furnace. Your furnace runs on LP and electricity. Electricity to run the, uh, 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 the appliance, and, but the heat source is LP. So you're just gonna, it clicks when you turn it on. If you hear that. Now just kick down right there. When you shut it off, bring it all the way over and click it again to the left. It's got to make that clicking sound. So as soon as I did that, the flame went out. Uh, but it's still going to cycle for a minute or two to, to figure, finish this purging cycle. Um, that's normal. Uh, it lights, like I said, it lights automatically. It makes three attempts to light, so if it doesn't light in three attempts, you shut it off, click it off, and then click it back on, it'll go through the sequence again. But it always lights right off the bat. It's never, not really an issue. The microwave works like any other microwave. The air conditioner it needs to be cleaned a bit. Uh, works like uh, you've got a you've got a uh, knob to select the uh, either two fan speeds, which are the which is the air conditioner running without the compressor, and then two air conditioning speeds, and then of course the other one is, is temperature, the thermostat. Uh, up here is a is a, a exhaust fan you see the one that says lock there hopefully you can see it you always want to lock it when you're traveling so it doesn't water doesn't creep up and through it to the inside that's important um, and then just that cranks it up and down this round thing right here is just a, a glass tube fuse holder and uh, you can see the rest of it you got different speeds different temperature that sort of thing so it works really well. If you have your, if it's a, if it's a warm day and you have the the windows open, you put that thing on too, and it'll it'll you'll be impressed about how much it cools it down. Okay. All right. So, as yeah, moving on, there are shower curtains here that go all the way around here, so you have some privacy. Um, the toilet works like any other RV toilet. In that, right now that you're seeing antifreeze in there, um, this is the fl the flush right there that gray handle so you're going to go like this to flush it the black tanks directly below so before you start using it you can't use it dry when i say dry i'm talking about the black tank so you put a dose of chemical in here and then you'll pull up forward on that the water's hooked up so water's going to come swirling around you put about a gallon of water in there in the tank below and then you start using it you if you don't the smell will be terrible plus it can get clogged up so Always have to have chemical and water in it before you start using it. 
Okay, uh, that shower is pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are your, this is your monitor panel here. This is where you turn your water pump on, like that. You can check your battery, which is good. Fresh water, fresh is empty, uh, gray is empty, black is empty. It graduates up in one third increments until it's full. Once you get past two thirds, you're gonna start thinking about dumping the gray in the black tank, okay? All righty. So while we're standing here, and then let's close this down, of course. Oops, I don't know if you can see that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not the world's best cameraman, sorry about that. Um, so this is your stuff here. So keep in mind, this is a this is a hanging pantry and this is a hanging wardrobe. They clip up, let's see, this is the hanging pantry clips right here and then the wardrobe is over here. Okay, they're just made out of vinyl and uh, you even get a, uh, if you wanted to put, there's a bar, uh, I think I saw it underneath here, but there's a bar you could actually hang clothes in the, in the, in the uh, uh, wardrobe if you wanted to. Um, this is a water filter and this is the wrench to unscrew the canister. If you choose to, you can add, you can use the water filter. Um, yeah, let me see, your water pump and, and all that stuff, or I'm sorry, your water pump and your, your, um, well your water heater anyway, I'm some confused here, is underneath this, this, this uh, seat here. You have to take that screw out all the screws are number two square headed screws so to access that sort of thing you'll have to remove a screw and uh, you can you can spin off the canister and put this water filter in there and then put it back on you have to remember it only lasts for one season and you can't have it in there when you're winterizing so before you winterize in the fall you gotta take that filter out and then after you've dewinterized in the spring you put a new one in if you're gonna use it okay alright so this is a, uh, a fan light combo this is a light. This, this goes up here. It clips on the bar here. Okay. These are uh, controllers for your heated mattresses. So um, let's see what we got. You can see over here. Maybe you can see there's a, a white plastic plug there, socket there. Well, this plugs into that, and then this side goes into the nearest 110. And it's a. Uh, it's not a. It's not a mattress heater it's a warmer. It takes the chill out of the uh, mattress, so it's not going to heat it warm, uh, or it's not going to heat it hot, it's just going to warm it a little bit. Okay, all right, so what else have we got here? This is just a bag for your shore cord. That's a spatula you get with it. Okay, of course this um, tabletop folds down, and you can set it on these cleats here, these black cleats. Fill in the cushions and you get another bed. All right, storage here. And these bars are support bars. There's just two of them. They go kitty corner from each other if you... So basically, again, it's one of those things there's a million different... Uh, people have a million different ideas about what it actually is for. But let me use this one here because it recovers off of it. Really what it's for, you put it up right here like this. Very low tech, but it works. And then you whack it on like that. Basically, you're in the woods and trees fall occasionally. So all it's doing is giving your roof more strength in case it gets whacked by a tree branch. It just gives it more, you know, it can stand up to a lot more. There's only two of them. They go kitty corner from each other. Okay. Doesn't matter which corner, just as long as they're kitty corner. Okay. Now, when it comes to the other functions, like putting the door up and down, uh, raising and lower this uh, this camper. You're going to use the regular video that comes from the manufacturer for that. Um, the stuff I'm just showing you is a lot of that, a lot, some of it's in that video also, but I just went over it again for you and uh, into more detail with some of it. So, okay. So, uh, this is the 27 series high wall tent camper. So, I want to thank you for purchasing this from National Library Detroit. And um, remember what I said about inspecting the seals? Any place you see caulk from the factory, you're going to look at a few times a summer, three times a summer. Just look at it periodically. And when you see some separation, some year, sometime, you touch it up with the correct stuff. In this case, it's clear Proflex. Okay? The other thing is it's winterized right now, so the water heater is empty. 
and it's in bypass mode. So you're all set for the winter. Okay, thank you very much.